You're listening to episode number 24 of the Fearless English podcast. Welcome to the Fearless English podcast, where it's all about helping you confidently communicate with anyone without compromising who you are. Let's get started, Fearless Learner. Hello, Fearless Learners. So today I want to talk to Simon about um, basically how he speaks so clearly. Um, there was a time when I um, was listening to him present and I actually recorded a small amount of his conversation with the audience and I listened back and I thought to myself, I want to be just like him one day. Like I want to be able to speak with such clarity that every single word that I say has impact, carries meaning, and it's not just words, you know? I really think about what I'm going to say and the answers I give and so on. So today I'm going to interview him basically on that. And I'm hoping that through his journey of not starting with clarity all the way to what how he speaks now, how he's able to communicate, you'll be able to walk away um, taking some of the, the tips that he shares with us today. Hi, Simon. Hi, Helen. Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much. <laughs> Glad to see you. <laughs> so today we were, we're going to talk about how you communicate um, and the clarity. Like I, I like to say that it's um, very articulate, right? You're able to use your words to inspire, to communicate so that the person on the other side, they take every word and they feel something or they feel um, that you've sent them a message rather than just empty words thrown at them. Because let's be honest, have you ever heard of people talking and they talk a lot and you walk away and you say, I don't even know what that conversation was about. I want to be with the opposite of that. Yeah. Right. So let's, let's start with like, have you always been articulate? Have you always been um, a clear communicator? I've always found myself communicating okay. like, from a young age. You know, I was always, I was the one volunteering for ridiculous things at school, you know, poetry competitions and reading things out. And I've always enjoyed words, but I remember my school report um, and I got good grades for, for languages and stuff, but my school report, my English teacher was giving me pointers on how to improve um, as an English learner. And she said that I was verbose. So I took my school report home and I showed it to my stepdad. And I said, my English teacher said that I was verbose. I don't know what that means. What does verbose mean? And he said, it means you're full of sh-. And I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. Um, and I think what I took from that is that I was using too many words uh, uh, I'd be too flowery with my language. I was too many, you know, I could say in four words, but I'd find a way to use about 38, <laughs> you know? So I think that was my early experiences. And then I had, throughout my 20s, I had mixed experiences of presenting and teaching and facilitating and uh, talking in, in groups. So mixed experiences. Some of them went well, some of them didn't. I think that the core of this is practice, 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 practice. And you've got to make sure you're practicing the right things because there's no point practicing, you know, getting your 10,000 hours of practicing if you've learned terrible habits of speaking. So there's practice, but there's also opportunity to learn from people who are ahead of the game. So you can learn new tips and tricks. You know, I learned a lot of what I've learned about the, the art and the science of public speaking. I've learned from a business partner who spent six years studying the subject so in depth. You know, and, and he did the work. He went to the end of the competitions. He watched the videos. He did the courses. He read the books and immediately applied what he'd learned and practice, 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 practice. Now, I took the lazier route, <laughs> which I let him do six years of learning. And then I cherry picked the bits that matched my personality and built that into my style and then practice, practice, practice. So, I've, you know, on the shoulders of giants, you know, I've built my stuff on the work of other people. So, I guess where clarity has come from more, I think I, up until two years ago, I just said it's come from just experience. You know, I'm no spring chicken, Halima. I've been around a bit, it's not my first rodeo, and I've gathered lots of different experiences from life. 
But actually, I, if you ask me that question now, actually, I've got a different answer. And my, my answer has come, and this is what I'd encourage your listeners to do, is to talk from the heart, not from the head. Clarity comes from not being up in your head with all the anxiety of what am I going to say? What are they going to think of me? Oh, no, I'm standing in front of people. Uh-oh, what if I don't get this job interview? What if I say the wrong thing? What if the phone call doesn't go how I want it to go? What if they don't even pick up the phone? Blah, 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 blah. You know, I used to have a head full of bees, like many of us do. But the moment that I stop having a head full of bees and show up in the present moment and talk from the heart and just connect with who I really am, the words, just as they are now, and I'm looking at you now going, the words that I want to say are coming from my heart. That's the key to speaking the clarity, to shoot from the heart. And how do you get from the head to the heart, I guess? Like, how do you, um, I guess, do that? Yeah, it's a great question. I, I found a few fast paths, a few shortcuts. I can give you the shortcuts. The shortcuts are breathing. Massively helps. Can hardly recommend breathing. Um, because when we're anxious, we tend to hold our breath. <laughs> oh. You know, so, you know, breathe deeply. And the other thing about breathing is it brings you to the present moment. It's impossible to breathe tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock until you get to tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock. So if you breathe now, that's nature's strongest sign that you're alive in this present moment. So breathe deep. Um, act in the service of others, you know, full of love and heart for somebody else. What is it that I could say right now that will help me deeply connect with the person that I'm speaking to? And my favorite, my favorite app for the human mind, Curiosity 2.0, to be really curious about people and ask questions and invite questions. You know, it just helps you to connect with people on a, on a deeper level. I love that. So it's it's not, you're taking the spotlight away from you and you're putting it on someone else. We think about our own lives and our own our own ego. You know, wants us to think about. We think about things way too much. You know, we, we're always thinking about ourselves and what I need to do more of and less of. And how do I do this? And how do I do that? And what am I going to do about this? I, 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 me, 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 I, 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 I me, me, me. You know, we entertain that too much, and of course, what does that lead to? It leads to fear and anxiety because we overthink I mean can I read something to you yeah I have this amazing mentor who's from Sweden his name is Tobias and uh, we had a, one of the most beautiful conversations and he speaks with clarity in English and he's English is not his first language so I'm always amazed at his ability to even if he gets the words sometimes a little wrong or the grammar isn't perfect the words are doing the talking, but our hearts are having the real heavy lifting. Yeah. And then he's shooting from the heart. We're having a heart to heart. I love that expression because that's how to speak with clarity is have heart to heart with people because they know where you're coming from or feel you. It's not just about hearing what you say. Um, and one of the things to our conversation, this is what will prevent you from speaking with clarity is overthinking. And he told me, he said, I saw a definition of overthinking once. He said, the art of creating problems that aren't even there. <laughs> oh my goodness. I like that as the, well. <laughs> the years I spent overthinking, and we, we, I bet many of your listeners, and anyone that listens to this, will be familiar with the word overthinking. And I bet every language has got a version of what overthinking is, right? I mean, just for the people that are like, wait, I've never heard of this term before, could you tell us a little bit about what, what do you think? I mean, how could you explain that in the simplest possible way? A head full of bees. You know, a head full of bees. And well, imagine always buzzing, all these thoughts buzzing around in your mind about what if this and what if that and that thing that happened last time and what if it happens again and blah, blah, blah. All of these thoughts going around in our mind. Now, overthinking is a bit like putting a stick in your ear and stoking all of the bees so that they fly around even more. The chances of getting stung if you put a stick in a bee's nest increase dramatically. Like imagine you're reaching into a nest, a hive, <laughs> into, you know what I mean, nests, yeah. hives, I'm not a bee expert. <laughs> um, if you put a stick into a beehive and stir it up, the bees are going to fly around even more, they're going to get cross, you're increasing the chances that they're going to sting. Mm. If you take the stick out of the beehive 
and let the bees go about their business. They're just thoughts. You don't have to listen to them. They're just thoughts going around in your head. Just let the bees calm down. And when the bees go about their business, they make honey. I love that. <laughs> That's such, such a great explanation <laughs> for overthinking. Gosh. Um, so the idea is like to like let's go back to the quote. If you could read the quote again, because I thought that was brilliant the way he um the art of creating problems that aren't even there. That's what overthinking is. From Tobias's definition. So let, let's take an example. So like um, you make a mistake. You're speaking. You make a mistake while you're talking, and you're thinking he thinks or she thinks I'm an idiot. Um, I should never speak again. Uh, why am I even bothering? All of yeah. these thoughts. And the next time you go and speak, you'll be thinking about what happened last time and when worrying if it was going to happen again. And it's like a double whammy. Like, I don't want it to happen again because I'm thinking about what happened last time. I'm creating the same situation twice in my head, neither of which exists anymore because one's in the future, future doesn't exist, and one's in the past. Best thing about the past is over. It doesn't exist either. Yeah. And both of those thoughts will prevent you from showing up in the moment. And when you show up in the moment, you always know what to do. And and there's probably more likelihood of you making a mistake anyway if you're in your head. <laughs> I know. That's the irony yeah. of it. And the, the illusion is if I sit and think about all the things that might go wrong, it will prevent them from going wrong. It's a bit like, you know, if we were in the car together, I've talked about this before, I think. If we're in the car together and I'm driving too fast, and there's a giant oak tree on the bend that we're accelerating towards. The one thing that neither of us can take our eyes off is the oak tree. We're like, oh my god, that oak tree looks really scary. And now I'm staring at it. Now with me in control of the car, do you want me staring at the oak tree? Yeah. No. You want me staring at the space next to the oak tree. That's the thing we want to hit. Not the scary thing. Let's aim for the thing that's less scary. Let's get the result that we really want, not the one that we're fearful of happening here. Yeah, for sure. I love that. Like, we went from, like, how do you, like, speak with clarity? It's like, I'm trying to summarize what you said now. Just get out of your head. Breathe. Be in the present. Yeah? I love that. Do you have any last kind of, like, I guess, thoughts that you want to, like, for anybody that's listening now, is there any last thing that you want to say that they can take away with them? Um Be calm, be peaceful, and then the right words arrive from somewhere else. So <laughs> otherwise. Thank you so much, Simon. That was amazing, as usual. I feel like I need to have him um, regularly come on to this podcast. If you guys agree, let me know. <laughs> I need proof. <laughs> I, I see what's going on there. <laughs> Thank you so much, Simon. Um, I'm sure everybody absolutely loved this episode. Um, hopefully we can have him on again. <laughs> All right. Thank you, everyone. If you enjoyed today's lesson, then you'll love our speaking club, where we take what we learn in these lessons and put it into action. You'll get to meet other women and practice speaking English every week for an hour. All you have to do is go to www.blackboardenglish.com forward slash cup. I'll say that again, www.blackboardenglish.com forward slash cup. Let's work together to help you become a confident English speaker. See you in class.